Okay, now let's go over adjusting entries in accounting. Adjusting entries in accounting are used at the end of the accounting period when you want to issue financial statements. So you're trying to make things as perfect as possible. Now the end of the period could be the end of the month, so you'd match all of your expenses to one month. It could be the end of the quarter, then all of your revenues and expenses would be matched to a three-month period, or it could be the end of the year when all your revenues and expenses would be matched to a 12-month period. Well, the whole point of the adjusting phase is that we want to make sure that the income statement includes all revenues earned during the period covered by the income statement and all expenses incurred during the period covered by the income statement. So we don't want some of them, or most of them, or only the ones that have been paid and received. We want to make sure that all revenues and all expenses are matched to the correct period. So, adjusting entries fall into two broad categories, revenue adjustments and expense adjustments. So when you're looking at an adjustment, the first question you're going to ask is, 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 is it a revenue adjustment or is it an expense adjustment? Let's look first at the revenue adjustments because there are only two kinds of revenue adjustments. Revenue adjustment number one is revenues that have been earned but not yet recorded or received. So for example, if I'm a lawyer if I consult with a client at the end of December, if the bill is typed in January, but the customer pays it in February, it is still under accrual accounting considered a December revenue. So therefore, at the end of December, I would still be owed money by my client. I've already performed services, and I would show an accounts receivable and also the revenue. So, revenues in this category have a very, very stylized journal entry. It will always be the same way. You'll debit accounts receivable, and you'll credit fees earned, or whatever revenue account you have. And normally, in this category, the amount is given. Very rarely will you have to calculate it. Normally, they'll say, oh, $1,500 of revenue have been earned but not yet received. So that's just the amount you drop into the journal entry that you both debit and credit. Now the revenue adjustment, the second one is a little bit harder, but not that bad. Unearned revenues now earned. We learned in the last recording that when we receive money in advance, if you remember Rihanna, it's not actually considered a revenue, it's considered a liability because you owe something. So, once you've performed the services, you can then show the revenue. So the journal entry that we would do if we've earned revenues that we previously received the money for, unearned revenues now earned, we would debit the unearned revenue to show the reduction in the liability and credit our fees earned or whatever other revenue account. Very often in this category, we do have to calculate what portion has been earned. So they might say that it's a one-year contract and one-twelfth of the services have been provided or one-quarter of the services have been provided. So you normally have to calculate what portion of the unearned revenues have now been earned. Okay, well that takes care of revenue adjustments. There are really only two kinds. Number one, the revenues earned but not yet recorded or received. And number two, unearned revenues now earned. So if it's a revenue adjustment, it'll be one of these two journal entries. Okay, hopefully we understand that. If not, rewind and play it again. Now we're going to go on to expense adjustments. Expense adjustments are very, very similar to the revenue adjustments. There are two types of expense adjustments, but there are also some special cases of those expense adjustments. So, expense adjustment number one. Expenses incurred but not yet paid. This is very common when we have salary expense. Your boss doesn't bring you into a room at the end of the month and pay you everything you've earned for the previous month. 
Your first paycheck of the next month normally covers some days from the previous month and some days from the current month. Well, your employer is not allowed to say, well, I paid it on January 5th for two weeks, so I'll just say all that money was for January. No, you'd have to split up the paycheck and figure out how much money was earned by your employees in December and how much was earned in January. This is required. So, in this category, when we have expenses incurred but not yet paid, you're going to debit the expense account and because you haven't paid it yet, it becomes payable. As of the end of the month, if you haven't paid your employees for work they've already done, you owe them that money. If you went out of business at that point, you would owe them only for the work that they completed. So we would debit the expense account and credit accounts payable, or maybe some other payable like salaries payable or rent payable. You would examine the company's chart of accounts to know which payable that you would hit. So, for example, if it was rent that was incurred but not yet paid, you would debit rent expense and credit rent payable. Normally in this category, once again, you'll pretty much be given the amount of the adjustment. You might have to calculate it, but normally you're just given the amount of, that you have to do. Then finally, we have prepaid expenses now incurred. For adjustment, for the second type of expense adjustment, we have prepaid expenses that are now incurred. If you remember from the accrual versus cash accounting, when we prepay an expense, we have an asset. But it doesn't stay an asset forever. When we prepay our rent, we don't have that asset forever. Once we occupy the premises, that prepaid rent expires. So what we do is we calculate the amount of the expense that's expired, and we would debit the expense account and credit the prepaid expense. So in Net Solutions, for example, when they paid $2,400 in insurance at the beginning of the year, they debited prepaid insurance for $2,400 and credited cash. When one month passed, they incurred one twelfth of that amount, $200, so they would debit insurance expense and credit prepaid insurance. So insurance expense would be the specific expense account, and prepaid insurance would be that prepaid expense account that was used when the expense was prepaid, and the amount would be $200, the amount incurred, which is one-twelfth of a full year. But we'll explain that when we get to net solutions. Okay, now we've gone over the two different kinds of expense adjustments. Now let's go into special case number one, which is supplies. Generally, supplies are really not very expensive, do not cost a lot of money. So many companies expense supplies when they're uh, purchased, but that's really not the right way to handle it. The right way to handle it is when you purchase supplies, you debit an asset account called supplies, which is really a prepaid expense because the supplies become an expense when they're used. What we do is we calculate the amount of supplies that are used. What we do is we take the supplies account to the beginning of our period from our trial balance. We add the supplies purchased during the period. Then at the end of the period, we take a physical inventory, so we count out how many supplies are left, and we drop it into this equation right here, beginning balance supplies plus supplies purchased minus ending balance of supplies is supplies used during the period, and that is the amount of the expense. So read the adjusting entries carefully. If it says these are the supplies used, you don't have to do any calculations. But if it says these are the supplies which remain, then you have to drop it into this calculation I have highlighted here and calculate the expense. The amount of the expense goes into the journal entry. For supplies, we would debit supplies expense and credit the supplies account. They seem like the same account, but supplies account are the supplies that are used up. I'm sorry, supplies expense account is the supplies that are used up, and the supplies account is the supplies on hand, and together they equal the total supplies purchased. Now let's get into our second special case, which is depreciation.
If I buy a vehicle, let's say for $15,000, that is really a very long-term prepaid expense. If that vehicle is going to last me five years, it costs me $3,000 a year just to have that vehicle available for my use, which is the $15,000 I paid divided by the five years of use. That's not repairs and maintenance. That's not the decline in value. It's just the cost of the asset spread over the number of years. But don't worry, you have a whole chapter of depreciation coming up in your future. So right now, use this formula to calculate the amount of depreciation for one year. It's a very famous formula. You take the cost minus the salvage, or residual value. You take that number and then divide that number by the useful life in years. But that calculates your annual depreciation. So you have to multiply that amount by 1 12th to calculate mon one month's depreciation and then match to the period of time covered under the income statement. For depreciation, we debit depreciation expense and we credit an account called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset and it is the part of the asset's life that has been used up. Um, we don't credit the asset account because the accumulated depreciation shows what part of the asset's original life has been used up. So by comparing accumulated depreciation to the cost of the asset, you can tell how old the asset is. But again, you'll learn more about depreciation in the future. For right now, just remember to debit depreciation expense and credit your accumulated depreciation once you have calculated the amount of the depreciation. And accumulated depreciation is an asset, but it's a contra asset. It has a credit balance, and it shows up as a negative number in the asset section. Okay? I hope this helps on adjusting entries. Next, we'll go through the adjusting entries for net solutions.